<laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the Oxford Online Maths Club. Um, my name's James and today I'm joined by Moshan. Um, say hi Moshan. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> cool, Moshan's a current student. We're also joined um, live in chat um, by another current student whose name is Yuhan and by some of you. Um, hi to Herb. Herb says it's their first time catching a live stream live. Um, hi to Jamie, who's here along as well. Um, I saw some other people around. I was talking to Kai before we went live. Um, and maybe you too. If it's, if it's your first time joining the live stream, like Herb in chat, um, you can join chat over at vvox.com. There's an event code in the YouTube description and on screen or something. Uh, there's also a link on the Math Club homepage. Um, the Math Club homepage is where you can go to get further reading notes and other resources related to stuff. Um, cool, I hope everyone's doing well and I hope that people let me know if I've done the tech wrong. I think I'm live. I think I'm live. Right, good, okay. <laughs> Moshan, you don't know, but I make an alarming number of tech errors. While we're getting while we're getting people in here, um, I thought it'd be nice to do one last push on Promise Summer Schools. Um, Promise Summer Schools, uh, it, it's got an application form that's got some maths questions in. So even if you're not going to do Promise Summer School, um, there are some fun maths questions in there. They're really good. Um, I like them quite a lot. Um, uh, Miles is here. Um, hi, Miles. Uh, and hi to uh, Akul. And I can see Oscar. Em's here for the second time. I don't think anyone's ever told me it was the second time they're here before. So that's good. Keep up the indexing. Um, let's do a, a poll. Um, <laughs> so um, somebody somebody put the poll in like straight away there. Um, oh, you can't really see this. It's a little bit off the screen. Um, but every week we like to check how people are doing on a scale from one to five. Um, I think today has been about four stars for me. We'll see. Moshan, how's your day going? What have you been up to today? Yeah, great. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> it's almost the end of term, right? Yeah. Think, yeah. It's like um, the last day of lectures before Easter is tomorrow, I think? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so Ox in Oxford, the terms are pretty short. Um, they've just done eight weeks of Eight weeks of term, mm -hmm. which is the time in Oxford in between in between Christmas and Easter, um, and time for a break before coming back for next term. Um, people are voting. The most common response about four stars, which is what I like to see. I'm always watching out for people who vote one or two stars, in the hope that maybe doing a bit of math today improves your day from one or two stars or wherever it is at the moment. Uh, just trying to catch up with chat as well. Um, Promise is for people who are pre-university, I think. I'm not sure it has an upper age limit. Uh, so I think if you're pre-university, then that's a thing. Uh, Miles was in the middle of typing and managed to vote extremely quickly. School's cancelled, maybe because of snow? Is it snowing where you are? It's horrible in Oxford. Um, we've got, uh, someone asked me, um, we've got we had a bit of snow yesterday. Oh, I don't know. Moshan, did it snow in college where you are? Uh, sorry? Did it snow where you are? It snowed for me in like different bits of Oxford. It was weird. Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm in St. Hilda's College, which is um, kind of far from the city centre, but it's fine. It's not that far, though, is it? It's, it's far in sort of student yeah. terms that they... Yeah. But how long, does it, how long does it take you to get to the maths department? If you... Mm, 25 minutes walk, 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, yeah, I'm used to it, so it's fine. Okay, that's, <laughs> there are, I'm sure there are people watching who have to do more than 25 minutes walk to get to, to, get to school in the, in the day. <laughs> um, okay, right. Good, right. Watch out from St. Hilda's College. We've got chat. Chat's mostly talking about snow. Um, uh, Herb's discovered that their shoes are not waterproof, um, which is not what you want on a snowy day. Um, I think we should start doing some maths, though. Um, so today's topic is uh, true shade tiles. And it's over to Marshall to tell us more about true shade tiles. Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, hi. Um, so yeah, maybe we can talk. Well, today we are going to talk about a bit, a bit about true shade tiles. So firstly, what's that? So basically, it's a um, type of patterns can be created by using a set of tiles with two different designs on them. So they are like um, 
arranged in repeating patterns to form a to, to form a tailing and uh, you can finally do some designs in that way so it is named after the french mathematician sebastian trochet um and he studied them in the like 18th century so uh, we can start by some very simple things we can first see some like with some some different kinds of trochet tiles so um so on the fr on the first frame you can see that um i've already written down something so uh there's a uh, the first this first can is called the constructing triangle which like one or oh, which in which like in the square one of the triangle is like black and the, the the other is white and you can easily see that there are four dif uh, four different Oh, how this kind of like uh, designs or like making making it into a pattern but by putting it in some in some order or just randomly and another uh and another can is um is called quarter circles where you just um connect the midpoint of the of adjacent edges by a by four by a quarter of the circle um so you can easily see that there are two such orientations in that way and um mm, not for this so time on the not picture, for this time because they've got rotational symmetry haven't they so you can't you yeah four times. <laughs> yeah exactly okay yeah so, so do you want to show this yeah picture? so on the yeah yeah so uh so for the picture on the right you can see that this is the pattern that we just put uh, many of these quarter circles together and to make such such a kind of thing and also some strategy games such as the uh, tracks and black path game are also inspired by this kind of uh, uh, this kind of tiles so basically this kind of games just uh, the basic idea are, are that you you try to make um, you try to make a path using these tiles or sometimes even uh, an extra tile which is like the crossed one and uh, um, and you try to avoid like you try to avoid um, get stuck into the boundary which is which are my which I marked like blue in the picture and the path is kind of it's a red curve so, oh, I see. so yeah. you, put, you put the tiles and, down uh, and it, you put the tiles down and it makes a it makes a curve right yeah um, yeah okay, okay. yeah exactly and some of them are oh, um, I see there's three so some of them are plus and some of them are the quarter circles yeah I think that's really cool yeah okay yeah <laughs> and um, another can is like a diagonal one which you just uh, which you just draw a diagonal line in the uh, in the squares so just um, uh, so you can also see that there are only two kinds of orientation in that way um, because of the rotational symmetry so also um, you, uh, in that way just just similar to the quarter circle one you can um, pr you can generate a, a kind of labyrinth just by putting all many of these diagonal tiles together so just as the picture suggests so yeah mm, yeah <laughs> so maybe we can <laughs> so so next maybe we can talk about the possible numbers of orientations. Um, firstly, we can think about can, straight um, can we pause? Sorry, can we pause? Pause a second. There's a little bit of pause a second. Sorry, I'm just gonna. Oh, I just want to play with the labyrinth because I think they're really cool. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Before, sorry. Before we move on. <laughs> uh, okay. In particular, it's like um, oh, I don't know where that one goes. I think it's really nice how this is just made out of. This is just made out of two two slashes, like a forward slash and a back slash. But yeah. you make these really complicated, larger structures. It's like generating a maze in a way. Um, yeah. It's not obvious that it makes a a good maze. Like some bits of it are, some bits of it are really small. But I think it's kind of cool that you can do that and just randomly throw down these two tiles and make something that's. Kind yeah, of yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe this yeah. sort of thing. I'm drawing these kind of joined up bits where the where the maze is joined up, and it's not obvious to me whether these bits. So some of them are small, and some of them are quite large. It's not obvious to me whether mm. they go on forever. I don't really know. I think that's. Mm. 
I think that's quite a hard mm. question, the sort of thing about how big do yeah. you expect these things to be? Sometimes they're small, yeah. sometimes they're large. Is there like an average size that you get? Um, I guess these ones I can just try and draw the loops in. Um, is there an average size that you get? Or maybe so many of them are infinitely large that there isn't an average. I don't really know. Um, I've never seen anything looking at the average size of these. Um, there's a little bit of lag on chat. The reason I'm pausing, sorry, is that there's a bit of lag where, for chat to catch up. Um, chat say that oh, yeah, yeah. Chat say that they love the tracks game. Um, well, so oh. one of the chat oh, cool. loves the tracks game. And somebody else says that um, in Minecraft, there are some blocks that you can put down. Oh. Do you know this? <laughs> Do you play Minecraft? Oh, I, I think I heard about that, but I haven't, no, I, I haven't checked it very carefully. There's like terracotta blocks in Minecraft. I'm really old, so I remember Minecraft before <laughs> it has terracotta blocks or whatever. Um, but apparently terracotta blocks, you can put them down in different, different directions. And if you throw them down at random, then maybe you can generate patterns that look a bit like this one. Or maybe patterns uh... that look a bit like this one. I can't really remember what the... Um, I can't remember what the patterns are on the individual Minecraft blocks, whether you generate stuff that looks like this or stuff that looks like this. This also, I also <laughs> kind of want to colour this one in, I think. So I guess you could maybe <laughs> even do this at home. If you wanted to generate like a colouring book for mathematicians, I guess maybe you could... Oh, what would you do? I right, guess you yeah, do this at random. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> you do this at random or something? Put down your quarter circles one way or the other way at random, and then you get a colouring book. Yeah. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, we were talking about graph colouring, like how many colours do you need to colour something in? And it's not Yeah, yeah exactly. I think it might be two. I think I might be able to two colour this, but I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm just colouring in your pictures, which is while we wait for, for chat. Oh, no, trouble. it's fine. Miles fine. thinks that um, coloured terracotta looks like this. Jamie thinks that this is cool. Um, because of chat lag, I have to assume mm. that Jamie's referring to absolutely everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up what yeah. terracotta blocks look like in Minecraft. <laughs> Sorry, I did warn you that I would interrupt quite a lot. <laughs> nice one. I've been distracted by... Uh, yeah, okay, terracotta blocks. Some of them have got kind of circles on. Some of them have maybe got rotational symmetry. If it's got rotational symmetry, it's kind of not interesting because... Or maybe the sides are different. Yeah, some of them have got not rotational symmetry. Some of them have got rotational symmetry. Okay, cool. Good, right. Uh, mm -hmm. Homework colouring book for mathematicians. <laughs> and build your own maze, labyrinth stuff. Um, I think I don't know how big the cells are on average. I'd like them to be quite big. Um, am I allowed to use this? Somebody in chat asked, am I allowed to use this as the starting point for some coursework? Um, <laughs> what do we think? Can they use this for A-level coursework? Um, perhaps, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so, um, one of the ideas for Math Club is that maybe you discover something cool that you want to talk about later on. I don't know what the rules are for your CS A-level homework, um, but probably if, you're, if your task is to find a bit of maths that you're interested in, then I don't see how anybody could have a rule that says you're not allowed to be interested in this. Mm -hmm. Someone has kindly in chat linked to a picture of some terracotta blocks for us. Um, yeah, do we like any of these? Any of these look good for truche stuff? This one's kind of got quarter circles on. This grey one down here. Um, this one looks like it's got right. Oh, they see these four different ones. Different faces have oh, different patterns yeah. on. Oh, I don't know about the different patterns. I kind of want different orientations. Maybe you can place them down in different orientations. Like, um, anyway, mm. right. Not a Minecraft stream. Should we do a Minecraft stream? Maybe we should do a Minecraft stream. <laughs> Charles says that the walking around, uh, walking around the maze is a bit like a random walk in 2D. Uh, do you ever come back to where you started? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that reminds me of a thing. Do you do you know this thing about random yeah. walks in two D? I can't remember. Do you do that? Do you do a course on this at some point? Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We did we did a lot of this in probability. Yeah, so I can't remember the result. Charles has referred to the result below. I can't quite remember it. What? what how does that work? Random walks in two D. Do you get back to where you started, just, or you don't? You just like you. Um, you st uh, you start from a certain point, and you can go let's say right or left with probability p and y minus p and this kind of thing. So you calculate like, oh, what's the probability that you get to you get to the end point before you go back to your starting point? So yeah, oh, that's in one okay. D actually, but in two D it's just kind of a similar thing. Okay, 
Yeah, there's different results in yeah. different dimensions. I'm trying to work out if it... Because this random wall can't cross itself, and it's not quite... Uh, anyway, never mind. Um, <laughs> you wanted, I think you wanted to talk about possible orientations before I rudely interrupted and talked yeah. about Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so first we can, we can think about, like, how, how many ways to place two tiles next to each other. So uh, we have this kind of four, or we will consider this kind of four, four orientations of the simplest tiles, let's say. Uh, so we can call it, call it like A, B, C, D. So the way to think about it is like that. Um, if, we just pick, uh, if we just pick uh, one of these four tiles and uh, we say that they are, we can, uh, if we want to put another tile near to it, there are like four positions, which is up, down, right, and left. And, but also for each of the four or four, uh, four positions, you can put like, um, you can also have four choices, namely A, B, C, D to put uh, in the uh, to put in that position, so uh, if you if you count that uh, that that number, which will be four times four times four, which is sixty four sixty four ways to place two tiles next to each other. However, um, in these sixty four orientations, there are huge like repeating things. First first kind of repetition would be like um, some some are just indis indistinguishable or like. Uh, or they're the same to each other. Let's say um, if we put like a, uh, if we put b to the neck to the right of a, and it is ju just uh, the same same as put a next to b. So right. yeah, the order you put uh, down the tiles doesn't matter. So if you're trying to think about yeah. <laughs> all the possible ways you could start doing the tiling with just two tiles, the order yeah. the order you put them down doesn't matter. And I guess. A yeah. on top, putting an A and then putting another A next to it is the same as, yeah, putting the, the A standing the other way around. Yeah. Okay, so, so uh, maybe not 64 possibilities. Yeah, so, if, yeah, so uh, we, we know that mm. if if we put B right uh, on the right to A, is this the same to that if you put A to the left to B? So this just reduced down to only 30, 32 such kind of orientations. Um, however, there's another kind of reputation where it's the rotations of others. Let's see, um, if we put a a uh, put put an a next to another a, um, uh, it just look like that. Oh, yeah, my my drawing is quite bad, but I'll try to. So it's, it is it is like that. Uh, but it is this it is um, rot of rotation symmetry to C C. Which is like that, um, yeah. You can you can you can see that it is like um, one hundred and eighty degree of rotation. So we we just say that these two cans are the same. So this just uh, th this this kind of reputation just reduced down to or just let our orientation reduce down to only ten. So um, yeah, I'll quickly draw this. All of these ten um, orientations. It is like that. One of it is like that, and uh, we can also. Uh, and, and the other is like that. Let's see. Huh. And and the third one is like that. Mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can try by yourself, but I'll just. Draw all of them. Draw all of them, and the other is like that. Let's see. Mm. Mm, yeah. So you're thinking about all the possible and, ways to uh, stick two tiles together. Yeah. But there's yeah, yeah, yeah. Only so many possible things that can happen, especially if you treat rotations as the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Um. Yeah, yeah and uh, also another is look like that. Okay. Huh. The other one is like that. So, yeah, I promise I'll be quick. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I'm enjoying this. This, I, are you doing this? I can't quite tell you. If, I'm sure you're doing this systematically, but I can't quite tell. I've got a bit lost about. Oh uh, yeah, I, 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 I'll tell. I'll tell about the structure okay, okay. in a, in a minute. Okay, okay. So, yeah, basically. Uh, let's see. 
Let's see if I can work yep. this out. A A B B. But then C C you're counting you're counting C C as the same thing as A A, just rotated by hundred yeah. degrees. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So huh. um so yeah, so this so this are all the ten all, all the ten orientations up to rotation and up to the same kind of oh we reduce the same kind of thing. So oh, we have these ten orientations remaining. So uh, actually, if you just observe them, you you may find out that they are kind of a structure. Let's see for uh, okay, I'll change another color. Uh, for for these two uh, connected by a by a blue line, this actually just um, if if we just say if we change the if we swap the color of the upper one, it is uh we can got it we can get the we we can get a lower one and also similar to these two, if we change if we swap the color of the upper one, we got the lower one, and also similar to these two, and also these two are the same situation, um so and uh, and there are also two remaining and for these two. Um, this oh, so for this green for this two green one, um, actually, uh, swapping the color of one of them just gives a a rotation of itself. So yeah, basically this is the um, the structure inside these orientations, and we're gonna go back to that in a minute. So yeah. So um, wait, wait. So that some of them, some of them are kind of opposites to each other with the colors flipped. But some of them are like themselves. Yeah. <laughs> like they're self. Yeah, yeah. If you swap the color, you, yeah, you got a you get a rotation of themselves of itself. Okay, so. okay. Yeah. There's kind of different symmetries that you've got mm -hmm. going on. The different different equivalences. Yeah. That you might count them the same if they rotate to be the same, or you might count them the same if they uh, yeah. flip the colors. If you've just joined us, we've got four mm -hmm. different tiles. Um, we've got four different tiles. They're called truchet tiles. They look like this. It's one half black, one half white, in the four different ways. Um, and we think about mm. what happens when you put two of them together. I'm just catching people up, sorry. <laughs> we think about what happens yeah, when you put two of them together. How many possibilities are there for, for what's going on? Um, why is this not the same as 4p2? So if someone in chat says, is this the same as four places out of two of which need to be filled? Um, you can use the same tile twice. So it's not to do with it's not. Yeah. It's not choosing two of the four tiles and and. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Not, them. not the case. Because we can have them matching, mm -hmm. um, and there's some subtle yeah. stuff to say, what might happen if we. Some subtle stuff to say what might happen if we consider some of them to be the same as each other, just rotated. Hmm. Okay, so we've got some possibilities, and they they sort of come in pairs, except for two of them where the, the pair would be the same thing but rotated. So there's some sort of structure on the pairs of tiles. I guess this is good because if your job is to tile everything, then instead of just choosing from the four possibilities, you could choose from pairs mm -hmm. of tiles. I don't know if that's the same thing. If you were... Um, okay, this is a hard question, sorry. I don't really know who I'm asking this question to. It's maybe, maybe I'm asking chat as homework, or maybe I'm asking Moshan on the spot, sorry. Um, if you tile, if you choose, if you choose out of these 10 possibilities at random, yeah, and you tile, um, you tile with pairs of truchet tiles chosen from these 10 tiles, do you get the same thing? Do you get the same sort of thing that you get if you just tile with single tiles? Do you get the same distribution of A's, B's, C's, and D's? Mm. <laughs> I think the symmetry. I think uh. Probably, I think you maybe do, or you maybe don't. Um, can you make all ten out of just A's and B's? That's a good question. I think the answer is no, because this one here, this is currently being represented as an A and a D, and if I rotate it around. Then it'll be a B and a C, um, so yeah. I can't just use A's and B's to play this game because they the way they interact together. Yeah, so it's a bit like forming molecules mm. out of them and then realizing that some of your molecules are the same. Um, ooh. Mm. How do we quantify this ma mathematically? We could assign numbers. Yeah, there's some suggestion we could put numbers on the tiles. I think I like letters at the moment. Okay, so they're they're pretty simple individually. There's just four, and there's kind of some obvious rotational symmetries. 
for the four of them. But when you start joining them together to make these pairs, these kind of dominoes of trichet tiles, there's some more interesting yeah. symmetry stuff going on there. I think we'll agree. Um, yeah, exactly. Are we, are, we, are we calling them trichet dominoes? What are we calling them? <laughs> Should we call them trichet dominoes? Uh, I'm going to call them trichet dominoes. Um, maybe, but I found this on the in the chalk desk, but they, di they didn't give this a name, so I don't know. <laughs> We're on YouTube. We're allowed to name things. Um, this is now called Truche Dominoes. <laughs> oh, okay. As, as of right now. That's, that's fine. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, I can't remember what's next. Um, oh, uh, it's just extending the things to the two and guns. So, yeah, it's oh, you want to, to the right. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, now we're gonna talk about ex if or what would happen if we can extend the tiles to not only the squares but also to and gongs. So in that case, we can assume that all the tiles are blobby, blobby cornered and two colored, which means uh, the adjacent vert uh, vertices alternate in color. Also, the strip um, adjacent to uh, vertices uh, also alternate in color. So you can see the 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 two square side true. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we just don't cons consider the simple, uh, simple uh, triangle one, but we consider this more complicated one. So uh, if uh, so now if it, if we put this kind of like rules in a square, we would uh, we would get only two orientations, which looks like that. So yeah. Um, uh, also, uh, so but now we can consider even more interesting things. We can consider uh, is the hexagon tiles. Um, so we we can consider how many different how, how many different orientations we can get if we just assume all the tiles are blobby cornered. Um, so the way that we can consider this is is like um, uh, it, it, it's like um, the th uh, we know that there will be uh, three white co uh, three white corners or three black corners. So let's let's consider three white corners first. So we can we can consider whether whether the three white corners are connected or isolated. So uh, so one one situation is that all these three white corners are connect uh, are isolated, which means the other three. Uh, are connected, so it is. It is, it is kind of like that. So if I draw in the spare hexagon, uh, in in the in below, it is. It is look like that. So yeah. And the similar for uh, the same case applies for the if we have three black corners. Uh, so it is also the case that we when we swap uh, when we swap colors um, of the first one, so the second one would be look like that, and uh, an another case that, which is more interesting it is like I don't know, uh, uh, it, it is like that I gonna go back to green so if we like um, we can we connect two of these corners but but isolate one of them. Um, it will be like, let's see, um, it'll be like this, uh, wait, let me change another color, okay. it'll be like that, so, yeah, uh, if we go back to black and, and white, it is like this, um, I see, so you're, you're trying to do something with... The extension, so I get it, I get it. Yeah. So the extension for squares, yeah, 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 for squares, yeah. you've got your rule is something like each side has got to be joined to one other side and they can't cross over. These joining bits can't cross over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. there's only really one sort of shape you can draw on the square to join up the sides, to join up the midpoints yeah. without crossing anything. That's not very interesting, it's those quarter circles that we had before. I guess you can colour it in these two different ways, but there's only really sort of one way. Yeah. I guess you could join it the other way, but that would be a rotation. You could join the left to the bottom, um, but that would yep. be a rotation of this one. Um, but with a hexagon, if your job is to join up the midpoints with none of the lines crossing, there's other stuff you can do. I think 
This yeah. reminds me a little bit of the game. Uh, what's the game? It's called like uh, uh, Tracks. One of the Tracks games. It's got hexagons. I think the lines are allowed to cross there, though. Um, and we're thinking about lines that are not allowed hmm. to cross. That we get these nice. So we get these nice separate regions. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, so you've got different ways to join them up. Sorry, I interrupted quite badly that time. <laughs> you've no, got no, separate, no, separate corners where you just join each thing to the nearby to a nearby corner and keep it separate blobby corners. Yes. Yes. Um, and you've got this one where you join it to an opposite side. Am I being silly? Is that is there anything else? Uh, I think there are only three because. Um, the remaining would be just like uh, symmetries of these three, okay, or okay. just same as one of these three, I guess. I see. If my job is to join up the midpoints to design some sort of hexagon oh. truchet tile, hang on, I'm going to do a quick thing. If I join this one to here, then I've cut this one. I've cut this one off. It can't join onto anything without crossing over. It feels a little bit like topology, like um. We did some topology recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got to join this one either to a nearest neighbour, or I can join it to the one directly opposite. And if I join it directly opposite, then I'm going to have to pair these two up, and I'll get that case. And if I join it neighbours, then I guess I've got some more choices, but I haven't got very many interesting choices. Okay, so for hexagons, you get this new sort of tile, but if your lines are not allowed to cross, if the edges of the regions are not allowed to cross, then I think these are all of the shapes you can make. Cool, okay. Yeah. Did I forget yeah. to say that Yuhan's in chat? Yuhan's in chat. Yuhan says hey in chat. Somebody says hi to Yuhan in chat. <laughs> um, okay, that's hexagons. We've got these three. I think you said two n gons yeah. at some point, right? I can see some octagons. Yeah, yes, <laughs> so we're going to consider also octagon and decagon. Okay. So, yeah. So a job, is our job still to... The right bit? Yeah. Oh, right, sorry. Is our job still to um, join up the midpoints of the sides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Join up the midpoints of the sides. Rule. To pair up the midpoints of the sides using curves, but the lines are not allowed to cross. Yeah. Okay, well, that is a fun game. Yeah, exactly. If you're watching at home, you so, might like to try. Yeah, the... <laughs> <laughs> you think they can do it at home, right? Uh, you could join up the midpoints of the sides with none of the lines. Yeah. <laughs> That's a game. <laughs> okay. But I think yeah, you should do it too. For the, <laughs> uh, for the octagon, yeah. So for the octagon, it is kind of the kind of the same, essentially the same as what we do in hexagon. So firstly, we can have um, like the dotted ones. How to? Uh, we can, we can have like only the four, only the only the four corners are white and the remaining are black. It just looks like that. Uh. Yeah, and uh, similarly, if we just swap the color with these four, with these four corners are black, and the remaining are white, just like that. So yeah, mm. and now um, if we consider that one of the uh, another ways to consider like one of the corners. Why is white? Then we need black uh, all beside, uh, next to it. Um, so the black. Um, let's see. We can another uh, one way to produce the black is to like join the two midpoints. So we have white here and black here. And uh, yeah, and, and for the remaining. Uh, so th this corner is like. Uh, so this so this corner is like white and this corner is also like white, and we need the, uh, this two to be black. Uh, in order to produce that, one way is to um, just directly, yeah, just just directly make it black, and uh, so and and uh, the, the remaining corner is white, which is perfectly obey our rule. So yeah, this is one way. And another way is just to directly swap the color. Uh, so we have this to be black, and uh, this to be white, and uh, this uh, these two parts, uh, these two small parts to be white, and this two large part to be black. Yeah, something like that. Uh, 
yeah. And also, another way to do this is uh, going going from go going from this. We can just uh, we can do uh, we can also do the same thing. Uh, here's the small part is white and we have black here. And for the remaining part, uh, in order to make uh, in, in order to like obey what we assumed, uh, we can have um, another like curve mm -hmm. to um, another curve to make it to make this part white and this is black and uh, yeah, I think this is another way to do that and uh, also. Uh, the the last one is just by swapping the colors. Oh, uh, yeah. Chat's doing really well. So chat's oh, suggesting yes. chat's suggesting. Yeah. While you color that in, I'll read uh -huh. out some chat messages. Um, Jamie's pointed out you can't do odd numbers. You can't do odd numbers of sides because that you won't be able to pair up the midpoints. Um, there's a suggestion that we should oh, try. Oh yeah, exactly. About, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why you skip from hexagons yeah, yeah, to yeah, octagons. Yeah. Um, that's a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What have you got? Yeah, sorry, I, I forgot. I should, <laughs> I should have talked about that. But yeah, yeah, thanks for pointing that. This is a very good point. <laughs> I, guess skipped, I guess we skipped pentagons as well, um, because you can't yeah, pair yeah. up your five main points. Um, the suggestion for more colors, which yeah, exactly. I can't quite tell how more colors would change things immediately, but I want to see it. So someone, someone at home says, "What if you use more colors?" I'm not quite sure entirely what they mean, but I'd like them to give it a go. And then ideally, let me know mm -hmm. what happens if you have more colors. Um, I've seen people try this where, or maybe you're going to do this in a second, so I shouldn't say too much. But I've seen people do this where instead of just marking the midpoint on each side, you put mm -hmm. more than one point on each side. Maybe that's boring. Maybe that's just the same as having twice as many sides or something. Yeah, maybe that's the mm -hmm. same as having twice as many sides if you put two spots at one third and two thirds of each side and join them up. Maybe that's kind of the same. Oh, but I suppose that helps because um, one of my concerns here is that, you know, the, the square trousseau tiles were really nice because we could tile with them. Mm -hmm. Hexagons, you still have me yeah. for hexagons because you can tile space with them. Octagons don't tile space, right? You can't fit them together. Oh yeah. So, so these do exist. No, these, like, I mean, these are no. the set. But somehow on yeah, yeah, own. but yeah, why we can't tile them together? This that's true. <laughs> yeah, but I've got half a plan, right? Because I think we could squash them to be squares. Um, let me just think here. So I think we could squash them down onto squares by marking two points on the sides. Mm, yeah. And then doing a yeah. kind of topology thing, so that the way you've joined up your eight midpoints, I want to join up these points on the square. So maybe there'll be yeah, a yeah, 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 exactly. Right, okay, so there'll be a sort of yeah. corners one. And I'm going to mark my eight points around the square. Okay, so for these larger mm -hmm. polygons, they don't tie your space, but you can still use the the patterns to join up the dots in... Oh gosh, I should not be yeah. talking at the same time oh, as doing exactly. this. <laughs> this is a band and some... Oh, I'm going to have to draw like little semicycles here to join oh. things up. Oh, that's kind of nice. I think this is... <laughs> Not oh, yeah, obviously yeah. mad. Cool. I think it's it's not quite the same as true tiles either because I've had to do some little semicircles as well as some straight lines. Maybe I could make yeah. That Maybe I could make these semicircles. Yeah, yeah. Quarter quarter circles or something. I kind of want to oh, see what that happens yeah. now. So for your larger for your larger ones, I think it's okay. We can squash them down to a square and then tile with squares. So mm -hmm. we're describing totally real tiles that do tiling. I really like these. It's possible to get. Mm. <laughs> Designing the tiles is <laughs> it's possible to get excited yeah, yeah, designing yeah, the exactly. tiles and then think, oh, how am I going to tile with these? Um, but I think you're okay because I think you can deform the tiles. Chat, am I making any sense? No, probably not. Um, <laughs> Kai says, "Is Kai's here?" Kai, we're designing tiles where you um, join the mid, join up the midpoints, colour in the regions. The lines can't cross. These are called trousseau tiles. Um, can we use octagons? Herb wants to know. Can we use octagons and squares to tile the plane? That sounds really clever. Um, let me think. So octagons tile with squares. If we put a square in here and a square in here, 
we can tile like this. Hmm. I think the squares are going to have to do something like that. Is black. The squares are going to have to do something quite interesting. Um, yeah. Oh, no, this is okay. We'll rotate that one. Rotate that one around, and then the squares are all going to look like. Yeah, maybe the squares will have to look like this or something. With a little sort of filler squares that sort of fit in to fit the pattern. Where maybe this one has to be. That's too round or something. Goodness me, maybe that one has to be that way round or something. So there's sort of squares to fill in, fill in the octagon pattern. It's a good point, Herb. Octagons mm. and hex, octagon, octagons and squares together can tile the plane if they work together. Um, I've no idea if my bit about deforming deforming octagons into squares made made things work. The orange marks are from when Moshan was talking about uh, talking about the corners individually. So one way to track these is that the corners the corners all snake colours. So counting around the corners can be a helpful way of thinking about the regions. Octagons, we got six this time. What's our sequence then? Yeah. So we had two squares. <laughs> Hang on. We had two squares. Or we do we, are we counting the squares to the same thing because they were the same under rotation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. we've kind of got one square. Uh, no, no, I, we can't. We can't just uh, just as two. Just just as two, not one. Ah, okay, okay. So we've got quite a lot of quite a lot of octagons then, because we can rotate these. I think. Oh, oh, sorry. I mean, I mean, just I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. We we don't count for the the rotational symmetries. So just like two squares, just uh, three hexagons, and just six lots of octagon, not not to rotate them. So, yeah. Okay, so maybe there's a sequence there that I guess maybe will homework homework problem or something. How many do you get in general? <laughs> should we show them the 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 decagons? Let me know when we should show them the decagons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, we can move to the yeah. decagons. Okay. So, so yeah, I will not. I would not bother to to draw all of that, but. Basically, it is it it is essentially essentially the same. So you can see now we have got ten or ten ten lots of decagons, um, following the same rule. And uh, another thing you can you may observe is that it is also the same structure to the, um, to to what we did just before to place two tiles next to each other. So we can observe that. Um, uh, th th these two, uh, these two connected by the red lines are just um, we. S if we swap the colors, we get uh, we get another one, and all similar to uh, and also same thing happens to these two, and these two and these two, and for the remaining for the remaining two uh, the two blue ones, uh, if we swap the color, we get um, rotation of uh, of itself. So it essentially. Uh, exactly the same structure as we did for to place the two tiles together. So yeah, we we will also get back to this before uh, in a minute. Um, yeah, so I don't I don't think there's a, like a um, there's a sequence uh, about the numbers of different orientations, but maybe the structure is more of our interest, I guess. So, yeah. Perhaps. So the sequence the sequence of how many of these there are feels. Yeah, the sequence. It's uh, either. I don't think there's sequence. Do you know how much? Well, let's say that neither of us know how many there are for twelve-sided shapes. Mm. The decagons have atoms. Um, I guess maybe this is slightly more than people in chat were expecting. I think the sequence might have gone one, three, six, ten though. A sequence that goes one, three, six, ten is pretty suspicious to me. Um, the names on these ones are due to um, a magazine called Chalk Dust. Um, Chalk Dust Magazine is fantastic. It's written by students. <laughs> the people who write Chalk Dust Magazine are really funny. Um, <laughs> the names due to them, I will put a link in the further reading. Uh, we will uh, make sure. Yeah, sorry, Em. Bit of chat, bit of chat delay. Sorry, Em. Um, apparently not. Apparently there's loads. Um, um, Miles said something about slashing and switching them round, um, which I thought sounded like a complicated, complicated operation. Um, We've got back to this pattern where some of them, so the stripey one, where it's all stripes, if you flip the colours around, it's yeah. a rotation. And we're counting rotations as the same. Yeah, it's a rotation. And the pair of pairs of pants one. It's just. It's the same, right? If you flip the colours, then you get 
the same one. I think I want to count the square as just one mm -hmm. because if, I think in some of these problems you want to count you want to count separate rotations as different things, and sometimes when you're doing these counting problems, you want to count different rotations as the same thing. Uh, some of those some of those counting problems mm -hmm. are much easier than others. I've got a feeling that this is one where you want to count rotations as the same as each other. I think the sequence then goes one for the squares because they were the same under rotation, mm -hmm. and then three for the hexagons, six for the octagons. Nine for the elves. Uh, actually, the, the uh, actually these the, two squares are not in rotation. Oh, right, because we coloured them in and we had. Oh, that ruins my triangle numbers yeah. idea then. Sorry, yeah, of course, because we coloured them in, so they're not the same under rotation. Yeah, so yeah. No, yes, absolutely you're right. Sorry. No, no. Yeah, thanks for. <laughs> no, you're right. That's actually really annoying because that means the sequence goes two six. Nope, two. Yeah. What have we got? Two. Two three, three six, six ten. ten. Okay, I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I retract, retract, retract anything. Yeah, no, sorry, this sequence goes two, three, six, ten. Uh huh. And I don't know, I'm not going to comment on how many there are at the next one. I've decided this is one of the counting problems where I don't know the answer. Sometimes counting problems are really hard. I mean, either. Yeah, yeah, people in chat say that one, three, six, ten are triangle numbers. What are we trying to find out? Uh, we're trying to make all of them. Um, Recap then for the homework problem, I suppose. Before you've got, I know you've got more stuff to address. <laughs> <laughs> Recap because this has caught people, got caught people's attention. I think um, they love it when I don't know anything, um, which happens a load. So you think it would? Well, anyway, um, <laughs> um, we've taken a, a, a polygon with two n sides. Here, two n is ten. Yeah. And we've joined up the midpoints. I'm just running through it one more time. We've joined up the midpoints. Mm hmm. With yep. curves that curves that don't cross each other, um, and mm -hmm. then coloured in the regions black and white, um, yeah. we count things as the same if it's the same under rotations. So this Blackpool yes. Tower but slanted the other way, we count as the the same thing because it's rotation. Um, we count yes. things as different if the if the colours are flipped. Um, unless yes. unless flipping the colours gives you a rotation, in which case that would be yeah, the same. yeah. <laughs> the kind of rotations are the same. Um, the question is, how many mm. do you get? Um, for squares, the answer is mm. two. There's only really one way to join the join the midpoints together, and then you've got two choices about how you colour it in. For hexagons, it's three. For octagons, it's six. And for decagons, it looks like it's ten. So we've got a sequence that goes two, three, six, ten, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, Miles is guessing the next one is twenty. Um, <laughs> like something to do with Pascal's triangle, and one three six ten is in Pascal's triangle. It's a bit of a running joke this this year that Pascal's triangle turns up way too much. <laughs> a suggestion in chat that we just go and just Google it in the online encyclopedia. There's some mad, something mad involving binomial sequences. Okay, which would agree with Miles's twenty. Right, cool. Homework. <laughs> it's not actual homework. <laughs> I think they know that they don't have to do the homework. Um, what did you want to tell me next? So we, we've got about ten minutes on the stream. What's what else can we do? Oh. I suppose. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, we can. Well, we can just quickly talk about the treasure tiles in three D. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Really yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um. So for the the treasure tiles in three D, uh, actually the same kind of idea. So we we just talked about that. If we uh, if if we just uh, put it in the if it it is in a square, um, it's it's basically like, um, wait, where are my squares? Yeah, it is basically like either that, um, or or that. So, um, the thing is, if we uh, we're gonna use this these two tiles to make a, uh, to to make a cube so in order uh, to make the questions slightly uh, slightly easier we can we can just uh, think think that if uh, for the because uh, in the square gonna be the faces of the cube so if the square is uh, has the two has the two isolated corners in white we're gonna consider uh, we're gonna consider the the whole face to be white if it is if it has the two um Two isolated corners in black. We're gonna consider it to be 
uh, in whole uh, in whole black. So now the problem just uh, reduced to uh, how many ways are there to um, mm, to color a cube in black uh, in black and white. So I think I think many of you have uh, come across this problem. So it is quite easy. Like if it is all white, then there's uh, obviously only one such cube. And it, uh, same for if it is all black. Also, if we have one one face to be black and the the remaining five to be white, and this is only this only this is only also one such cube. Um, and also that um obviously up to rotational symmetry and similar f and the same applies for the uh, for the cube where only one face is white and also if we have two faces black and four four faces are white um uh, we have two of we have two such cubes because we can have either the adjacent faces are black or the opposite faces are black um yeah mm. also if we just swap uh, swap black to white we we also get two such squares with two faces uh in white and also if we have three uh faces in black um it it, it uh, there will also be two of uh, two of them cuz we can have like um, three uh, three consecutive faces in black and the other in white or the three faces that are joined in the same vertices in black and the other in white um and this this time we and this time it is the similar it is it is the same case for we have three faces of the white so we just don't count them a, a second time so we got a 10 again uh so if you remember that uh, if you remember we we also get a 10 or such orientations in the decagon tile and also the uh trash uh, trash's original pair which which is the case that we put two two tiles together um and also in the 10 in, in the in the 10 cubes uh we can also observe that this uh these four pairs are like uh let's say we swap the colors we get another one and for these two uh, if we swap colors, we just get a rotation of the other one. So yeah, uh, it is your open question whether um, the same structure, uh, the same structure appears in the three, three, uh, three like three kinds of tiles are a coincidence or not. So yeah, we still don't know the answer. Can I, yeah. can I check? Okay, okay, okay. So we've got this structure again with more yeah, inverses yeah. and there's ten of ten of a thing with eight of them forming nice pairs and two yeah. of them having self inverse. Um, I'm not sure I understood the bit yeah. where. So I get the coloring in cube faces. I feel like I've. I, I think I've. I mm -hmm. think maybe I've seen a lot of puzzles, but I think I've seen the coloring in cube faces before. It's like you either paint mm. one or you paint two or you paint three or four or five or you paint six sides. So you get like one zero. How many how many faces are you painted? Um, are you imagining? The bit on the left, are you imagining putting the true shade tiles that we had before? Are you imagining putting those on the faces of the cube? Or do, where do they... Oh, yes. Uh, just like... Yeah, just just like... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, huh, I get another color. So what, what's yeah, a, what's actually, uh, the true shade tiles we get... Yeah, well, we put it uh, as a as the faces of the cube, but like to make sense, easier, to make cases easier. Um, if it is like we have two isolated corners, uh, corners in white, then we just consider the the whole faces to be in white. So similarly, uh, if we have two, um, if if we have two uh, if we have two isolated corners in black, then we just consider the whole face to the whole face to be in black. So so that's why we uh, we are now considering how many ways to color the cubes in black and white so yeah it is just an easier way to think about that okay 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 so <laughs> just to say it back to you to check i've understood uh, so the colors yeah, for the cube, actually, it's <laughs> coloring in the cube we didn't have to use black and white in this story because <laughs> it's kind of unrelated oh, to how yeah, we're going to color yeah. things in um i guess you've oh, kind yeah. of pre-decided you've pre-decided that some of the corners are going to be let's say white and the other corner is going to be black and then your choice on mm -hmm. each face is whether you have isolated white corners or whether you join them up 
So here, a yes. white square, a white square in this diagram on the right means that you're thinking about having the white corners isolated, and a yes. black square. Yes. Mean? So here, this would be a kind of trousseau tile where it's the same on every face. So it would be white, yes. white corners isolated on every face. Whereas this one would be something a bit more interesting, mm -hmm. where the the white corners isolated on these faces, but over here it's not isolated; it joins up. So there's some sort of interesting pattern going on, where on this on the surface of this cube, there's a corner that's isolated as it goes around here, but across this face it goes over here, and then around here this kind of blob yes. is isolated around there. Okay, and I guess you yes. can. Do you stick these together then? Or are you, we're just thinking about the tiles that exist now, I suppose. Like putting these tiles onto a putting these tiles onto a onto the surface of a cube. Mm -hmm. I guess it is still joining up the midpoints of things. Um, Miles is talking about slashing again, and I haven't really understood Miles's slashing idea. Jamie likes it. I don't think I really caught what the slashing idea was, but I'm I'm interested, I guess. I, I suppose the open question is why is why is it this structure again? Um, maybe we can't have a satisfying answer. Yes, to that exactly. Question. Yeah, maybe that question doesn't have a satisfying answer. Maybe it's just the same because there's not that many ways that things can happen, and these things seem mm. to happen. Faces are black and white shapes, but represent edges. So the number of possible shapes we have, possible variations of a tree graph. Uh, do I believe that it's exactly the same thing as a tree? On the spot, that's not obvious to me. And then slashing the tree apart. Ooh. Okay, maybe some link to graph theory. Okay, chat's going to try and solve the problem for us. Um, <laughs> wrapping up, I know you wanted to say something about percolation, sorry. <laughs> um, this is like an application of this stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do it or should I? <laughs> um, so, yeah, do, do we, I mean, if... I mean, do we only have three minutes left? Because we minutes. only have three minutes, we can just. Oh, uh, sorry. I think three minutes. Yeah, should we just say it? <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. I, the, the, I think I'll just give this uh, this percolation things, and I think we can quickly talk about the uh, the, the treasure tiles from literature. Yeah, maybe that's for today. Okay. Oh, I forgot you had these Chandley pictures as well. That's why you're asking about the time. Where are the Chandley pictures gone? Sorry, I've got lost. I've got lost in the whiteboard. <laughs> so there's something oh, to do with no, percolation. No, 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 it's fine. I want to show you the orange. Yeah, the uh, but now. if we talk about percolation, it would be like a um, huge amount of time, I guess. Okay. So do let's do. I'll do two seconds. Or? Porous media is um, like a rock with but air bubbles in, and it lets liquids flow through it. So it's porous in the sense that it's got these pores, yeah. things can flow through it. Um, the pores kind of appear at random, uh, the bubbles in the rock or whatever it is form at random, and maybe they join up to give you a way of flowing through, um, or maybe they don't. So it's like that truche tiling, maybe it forms a very long labyrinth, or maybe it forms little uh, little isolated bubbles. Um, that's interesting to the people, sort of people who would like to get um, fluids flowing through solid rocks, um, which doesn't sound like it should be possible. Sorry, yeah. I remember, over here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just because these pictures are nice, and this is a much nicer thing to end on than me trying to explain percolation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so maybe just following uh, what James talked about about percolation. Um, actually, percolation is like uh, quite. Uh, it's like tightly linked to treasure tiles, and uh, actually, we can try to make a treasure, uh, try to make a percolation from a trashy tiles. Uh, I'll quickly draw that. Um, let's see, it is like, um, oh, so, uh, so yeah, I should say that one, one simple, ex uh, one simple model for percolation, it's like an infinite square lattice. And uh, you just color every edge, either black or white. So let me draw that. Uh, where's my pen? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll quickly draw that. Uh, let's see one, one simple model for the trashy tiles. So oh, not not in red. So we have a square lattice. Let's see we let let's only draw four this time, and we color the uh, the edges either black or white. Let's see. Uh, let's see. This is black and this is white. Um. 
Uh, so, so how do we make like a trashy tiles from that? So, so, so firstly, we can rotate this this thing, this whole thing, by forty five degrees. So it's gonna look like that. Huh. Oh, it's not a square anymore. Uh, but you know what I mean. Uh, so it's gonna like that. Mm -hmm. Uh oh wait. Oh, let me, uh, oh wait. Let me let me don't do this way. I, I'll do that way. No, uh, yeah, it, it is gonna look like that, forty five degree of sure. rotation, and then we can add a, uh, we, we can add a red vertex uh, in between. Let's see here. Uh, then we just uh, um, replace each uh, re replace the point, replace the vertices by uh, corresponding trash tilling. Um, so I'm really bad at drawing, but it is gonna look like that. Let's see. Is there a um, slash up here and a slash the other way underneath. If you ro rotate the picture, then you can build it out of slashes. Yes. Slashes? Uh, oh, is this why Myers was talking about slashes? Forward slash and backslash. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. let's see. Oh, wait. Uh, Drawing too, too big. So percolation rulers like are sometimes that. like um, if you've got a big grid of these things that they're like walls, segments of walls that either exist or don't. Maybe you're going through an airport and they've got those barriers that they can put up, and they've just put them up at random. Mm. Um, so that either the barrier is there or it's not, and for on their grid they've either put the barriers in place or they haven't. Um, there's sort of probability questions like. What's the chance that you can actually get to your flight um, through this grid of yeah. random barriers? Um, and it turns out that I think if you have probability less than one half, I think, then you can get through probably. And if it's probability more than a half that there's a barrier, I can't remember that result, and maybe I should oh, guess the number. See. Right, cool. And there's a way to turn so, those yeah, yeah, it's random barriers like that. into yeah. Um. Yeah. So um, actually, the uh, actually the the trash tiles is uh, very uh, is tightly linked to the percolations, and also there's another there's another structure that is also tightly linked to the percolations, and it is called the it it is called the Chlatney figures, which is um, oh I I I I've enrolled a picture here, which is a complex nodal patterns created by the a zero set of standing waves. So you can see these two, the the, the two pictures here. Um, so basically, uh, there's a conjecture called a Bogomolny-Schmidt conjecture. It says that uh, the statistical properties of the curves that separate the black and white regions of the uh, trashed tiling uh, they match on a large scale the statistical properties of the curves created by random Chalatney figures. Um, uh, so whether the conjecture is true or not is still an open question. Right. But if but we already know that the the treasure tiling uh, the treasure tilings are uh, are linked to the uh, percolation. And if and if the conjecture is true, uh, we uh, we will know that the uh, the the Chlatney figures uh, will also be linked to the percolations. And uh, as the percolations are already uh, very well studied, it will like provide and pr provide us with more information about the Chlatney figures. So, yeah. Cool. Link, so maybe are... linked to, maybe linked to another thing. Are all of these random yeah. things? Are all of these yes. random, are all of these yes. random things underlying the same thing? Cool, right, Miles yes. is trying to get onto the, onto the live stream. <laughs> to explain slashing diagrams <laughs> apart, um, but I think we're gonna. I think we're out of time, so I think we're gonna stop there. Mm -hmm. If that's okay. Um, okay. I'm gonna say thank you very much to Yuhan moderating chat. He's done a, a great job responding to people in chat and <laughs> joining in as well. Um, question: Would you need to do 3D ones in 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 3D percolation? Sounds like a great idea. Um, to piece together maybe these 3D bubbles and blobs and connected bubbles of stuff. Mm. That sounds really good. I kind of want to simulate that now and just to, just to draw the pictures of what it would look like if a, a slice through a 3D trousseau tile bubbly rock. Um, sorry, uh, <laughs> end, end of stream. 
Um, thank you very much to you, Hannah Chat. And thanks, of course, to Moshan on chat. The researcher this week was Moshan. The presenter was Moshan. Mm-hmm. Chat moderator was Yihan. Thanks to people watching. Um, we're going to be back next week for another episode of the Oxford Online Math Club. So we'll see you in 167 hours. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Oh, how do, I t- <laughs> how do I turn it off? How do I turn it off? <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, Matt Livestream, by the way, Matt Livestream starts on the 8th of June. Uh, Matt Livestream is launching 8th of June on this channel. Um, see you in a bit. Uh, the website's currently launching. So far, we've just made a new colour scheme for the Matt live stream. <laughs> we've made no other content except a colour scheme. Right, I really should get off the stream. Bye, everyone. See you next week. <laughs>